So we've worked with a drop-down list. I also want to play around a bit with a radio button list and a checkbox list just so you can see how those work. Okay. So we'll put a radio button list on. The radio button list is pretty much identical to the drop-down list. The only difference is the word drop-down becomes the word radio. <laughs> we still use the list item tags. Our list items still have values and text, and we access those properties of what the user chose in the exact same way. So if we want to present a radio button list, it's an ASP radio button list. Usually I'll use the prefix RBL. This one I'll pick maybe RBL province. We have to give it the run at equal server attribute, just like all our other ASP controls. And I'll just add three or four list items in here, the exact same way we added the list items here. So I'll add a code as the value. I'll add the full province name as the text. I'm not going to add all of them. I'll add in maybe two or three others. I'll just add in three provinces. And I'll maybe make Ontario the default. Great question. One way to find out. So one of, two th one of three things is going to happen. We're going to get an error. Actually, I guess there's four possibilities. We're going to get an error. It will default to Alberta, just default to the first choice because we've confused it. <laughs> or it will select the first one or it will select the last one. What do you think will happen? I actually am not sure. You think it'll select the first one? You think we'll get an error? Well, let's try it out. Oops. So it actually defaults to the last one, because in effect what's happening is we're setting BC to true first, but then by setting this one, the last one, to true, we're overriding it here. So we'll put another ASP label on where we can output the province selection. So I'll call this one LBL province. And Adam, what other attribute do we need to add in here? <laughs> right. Did that fix it when you recreated it? So we need the run at server attribute because it is a server side control. So now we have a couple of options. We'll use this label to display the province choice, and we can do this in one of two ways. We can either add the code onto our button that we already have that shows the country selection. So we could get that button to show the country up here and the province here, or we could add a separate button that would display the result of the province selection. We could do it at either place. I think we'll just add the code onto our existing button. So our, the button that we have will now show both the country selection and the province selection. If you want to add a separate button that shows only the province, that's fine. You could do that. So if you notice, these two lists, they're really identical. The only difference is the tag name. Here it's a radio button list, and here it's a drop-down list. 
and I use different prefixes. In both cases, the user can select only one item from the choice. As soon as they select one option, any, all the other options are automatically unselected. So I'll just go back to our code window and add another comment. So we'll set the text property of our province label. And in this case, we can either choose the text prop, the dot text, that'll show us the two character abbreviation, or we can choose dot selected item dot text, which will show us the full province name. I think I'll pick that one. If we just, if we remove this, whoops, if we remove this part of it, we just get the two character abbreviation. If we keep that whole thing, we'll get the full province name. We've changed code on, our, on the server, so we want to recompile, so we'll just click on build. And our DLL got rebuilt successfully. So now we should be able to try our change out in the browser. So now I can pick a country and a province. And my button will populate both the country label and the province label. And the radio button list, just like the drop-down, it's also sticky. Our choice doesn't get reset when our page reloads. Our choice will stay here. So which one of these we use, I mean, they basically have the same functionality. The only difference, obviously, the radio button list. It's more user-friendly because the user doesn't have to click it to see the choices, but it also takes up more space on the screen. So if we only have a few choices and the choices are small, we might want to use a radio button list. If we have a lot of choices or the choices take up, have a lot of text in them, we're better off with a drop down list because it saves us space on screen. Any questions, Sleeman? Sure. So if you type RBL, dot, LB, RBL province and hit dot, you don't get selected item in this list? Sure. Yeah. Now there's both a radio button and a radio button list tag. Did you use radio button list or radio button only? Okay, and did you use ASP list item tags inside? Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Um, so these two attributes, we always need at minimum the run at equal server, and we need an ID property in order to be able to access it, access any of the properties in the back end. So these are fairly simple because we're only allowing the user to choose one. And we've hard-coded the options. Most of the time, these options are going to come from our database instead. And we'll get to that in a couple weeks. We'll get into data access and we'll look at how do we actually fill these choices from a database query instead, which is what we'll typically do with a drop-down or radio button list. The other kind of list we should play with is a checkbox list. And again, they're going to work very similarly but there'll be one difference. What, what is, what's the functional difference between using a checkbox list and a radio button or drop down list? Yeah. Check the 
Right. So if we, exactly, if we want to let the user pick more than one option, this isn't going to do, and this isn't going to do because they're only going to let the user pick one option. So we're still going to have an ASP checkbox list tag. The HTML will look the same. Each option will again be in a list item tag with a value and a text. But when we want to read the user's selections, we're not going to be able to just access the selected item.txt anymore because there might be multiple items selected. So we're going to have to add a little bit more code to figure out which options the user picked. We're basically going to need to loop through all of the choices and check each item individually. Did the user check this one, yes or no? So I'll put on another div. Actually, I want to show you a little formatting tool in Visual Studio. You notice my code, some of it's indented one way, some of it's indented another. If I highlight a section, so I'll just highlight my whole form. Whatever's highlighted, if I right click and from the context, context menu choose format selection, it will re-indent all of my code for me. It'll do all the nesting. So if I were to take out any indentation, I could select that div say format the selection and Visual Studio indent it all for me. You don't have to do that, but it just makes your code more readable. We also can close up any section we're not working with. So if I want to close up the country section here, I can just expand or contract that div, which makes it also easier to work through a part of a page when the page gets really long. Sure. So let's say I've got this and I forget to indent or my indenting is all out of whack. You can highlight any section on the page or you can just click Control A and it will select all the H of the entire page. If you right click down near the bottom, there's an option here that says Format Selection and it will do all the indenting and nest your code nicely for you. So we've got one more div. We'll just put a label on. I'll call this LVL toppings, which has absolutely no relation to the other items. And we'll give the user a, a checkbox list to pick their favorite pizza toppings. And we want it to be checkboxes because obviously the user can pick as many toppings as from that list as they want. Picking one doesn't deselect all the others. So we'll put on a label where we can print out their toppings and then we'll add an ASP checkbox list. So I'll give it a prefix of CBL for checkbox list. Good question. Why would we ever, so there's a difference if we look in the toolbox, that's a really good question, Kaylee. We've got both inside of the standard section. We have both checkbox and checkbox list. What do you suppose, when would we use a checkbox versus a checkbox list? Adam? So a single checkbox when we have some kind of yes, no field, like I agree to the terms and conditions, where we're not, prevent, present, we're not presenting multiple choices, it's just a simple true, false, or yes, no, we'd use a single checkbox. And a checkbox list is when we're giving the user a whole bunch of choices and letting them choose as many of those as they want. Okay. A radio button and radio button list, I don't really know why we'd ever use a single radio button. If you can think of an example, you're smarter than me, and you're probably smarter than me anyway, but I don't know why you'd ever want a sing single radio button. That, that really makes no sense to me. Because once you check it, you can't, once you select it, you have no way to unselect it if there's only one. So, I mean, a typical example of where we might use 
checkbox list, I know we looked at this page last term, would be something like this one, right? So on the Globe and Mail's register page, they've used radio buttons here, and then here's a checkbox list, right? We can select one or all of those options. Like, I'm just thinking, like, like what Adam was saying, if there's a terms and conditions, but then, or uh, newsletter or something, like, there's usually both, right? Like, either I agree to this, Conditions and then also a newsletter. But see, so though, okay, so that would be where you'd use two separate checkboxes, right? Because in the database, we'd probably have two separate fields. We have a user table and we've got a agree, well, so let's think about this. We wouldn't store whether you agreed to the terms and conditions because if you didn't, we wouldn't sign you up. Yeah. But we'd have a yes no field that would store whether you want to get newsletters, yes or no. So we would have two separate checkboxes because they're independent. A checkbox list is a list of items that are all part of the same group, and a user can choose one or more of those. So in our checkbox list, let's make a bunch of list items. Um, here maybe we'll just assign ID numbers and put in any pizza toppings that you like. So you just you just want meat in there, eh? Well, what we're talking about pizza toppings. So put in however many options you want in your list. Put in at least three or four. No, I think we'll add a different button. So we'll put on another ASP button. I'll call it BTN order pizza. We'll make sure we add the run at equal server attribute. We'll put some text on the button. And then we can either double click it to get our click method written, or if I just type on click, if I select this option on click equals, instead of it calling our show country, we're gonna create a new click event for our pizza order. So I'll choose create new event. So there's our button. And you can see that our CS file, our server side C sharp file got changed because there's a star here. So adding this on click and choosing create new event, it automatically will have written that code in our C sharp file, which we can tell there's an unsaved change because there's a little star here beside the file name. So in a minute, I'll open up the C Sharp file and we'll see the BTN order pizza click method. So when we go in here, Visual Studio nicely wrote our click method for us. So what will we need to do inside of this click method in order that our label will show each of the selected toppings? Um, you're on the right track. In effect, the array is already built in. By putting the list items in, our checkbox list already has a built-in array of items. So what will we need to do for each item? Um, okay, but, but before we display it, are we gonna display all four choices every time? 
Right, so we're gonna have to go through each choice and we're gonna have to evaluate whether each choice was selected yes or no. And if it was, we'll have to build a list of all the choices that were picked. And then we'll print out that list in our label. So we're gonna have to loop through each topping and check if each item was selected. So we're gonna to need to use a loop for this. So just like in PHP and C Sharp, there's a for each loop. So I'm gonna create a variable called topping, and it's a list item. So for each topping in So our drop-down list has an array or a collection, as Brandon, as you were saying, has a collection of items. And we're gonna loop through each one and we'll call each one a topping. So this is similar in PHP how we looped through and we had result and row. But in C-sharp, the order is reversed. So what we want to evaluate one topping at a time is if the topping, we want to check the selected property. Did the user check on that one checkbox, yes or no? So if our topping is selected, meaning the user clicked on it, what should we do? So if the user clicked on the first topping, we want to print that topping into our label. So what we want, we can type it this way, is keep the current list in the label and then add on to it. So if the user picks all four toppings, we don't want to wipe out the previous choice. We want to keep the previous choice in the label, and then we want to add the next choice on beside it. We'll have to tweak this a little bit, but this should give us the basic result of what we want. So if the user clicked the current topping, add it to the topping label. So we'll have to make a few changes, but this should give us the basics. And we can run this through the debugger so we can see one, one choice at a time exactly what's happening here. Sorry? We will, not yet. Let's see the result first, and then we'll do it through the debugger so we can kind of walk through it one line at a time. So I'm going to compile my code to add my changes. We can try this out and see what happens. So we get our checkbox list. So if I pick, let's say I pick the first three and click our button. So it selected the three that we checked and it ignored the option that we didn't check. If I change my order, well, we have a couple of small issues with our code. What's one of the problems? No spaces. Right, first of all, we should probably add a space on after each choice to make it more readable. 
And what's the other problem? Right, why does it just keep adding on to the end? Why doesn't it wipe out my choices each time? Right, because the ASP controls are sticky, right? When our page reloads, we don't lose what's already on them. So what should we do every time we click the button? What should we be doing with our label? Resetting. Yeah, we should probably set the text back to empty before we start looping through our controls. Otherwise, it'll just keep building on like this, which we probably don't want. That's not terribly helpful. So the first thing is after we add on a topping, we need to put a space on the end of it. So now the words won't run together. So I've just added this, these few characters here in blue. We'll try that change first. So you just need to add a plus, and then inside of a quote, leave a single space. So now we should at least get spaces between our words, which we do. But we also need to add the code before we start writing out our list. We need to clear out whatever was in there. So first, clear the topping list. So we'll set our label text to an empty string. That will be the first thing that happens every time the user clicks the button. If our list of toppings already has some text in it, get rid of that text, set it back to empty, and then we can reset that list. So we'll just add that on here before we loop through. So this should work how we want it to now. So we get a space. If I change my list, our list is being wiped out each time and repopulated. I'm trying to think of how the clicks wouldn't be there because the checkbox is sticky, yeah. so the selections will always be there. They will be there automatically. I'm just going to run this through the debugger so we can actually see what happens, how this code actually works. So if I start an active debugging session, it'll reload a new instance for me. So I'll click the first two, I'll click, sorry, I'll click the first option and the third. So selected, unselected, selected, unselected. And when I click the button, now we can see our code. So if I mouse over my toppings list, it says right now the text is blank. And I can press F11 to step through one line at a time. So we're gonna go through our loop four times. So my topping is null by default, but after we start into our loop, it says my first topping is bacon with a value of one, and it tells me that selected is true. So if it's selected, our label, which is blank, now says bacon with a space. We come to our second topping, which is pineapple, number two, selected evaluates to false. So our topping label doesn't, not, doesn't get added to. 
We come around the third time and our topping is now broccoli, which is selected. So our if statement is true. We add broccoli onto the list. We go to the last one and our topping is olives. Select it's false. Is there a way to toggle through that window with F11? My F11 is my volume. That's a good question. I think so. Um, I think there is a keyboard shortcut. Let me look. Yes, there's this button on the toolbar that says step into. You can, I think you can click that instead. Yeah, so this little blue step into button does the same. So having this step-by-step -step debugger is really handy, not only for understanding what our code's doing, but when our page doesn't do what we think it's going to do, we're able to go through the code one line at a time and watch it execute and see all of our values. So if we've made a mistake or a logic error, we, it helps us figure it out much more easily as to what we're doing wrong. I'm going to stop my debugger now because I can't make any changes with my debugger active. So I'll hit stop. And I'll start it again without my debugger because it stopped my server. So in order to read a checkbox list, we're pretty much always going to need code similar to this. Because the user can select multiple items, we're going to need to loop through and evaluate one item at a time. Was this item checked? Yes or no? And then what are we going to do with that list? So on the Globe and Mail site, well, I shouldn't have closed that page. Just go back here. They'll have very similar code running here on the registration that loops through each choice and evaluates was each one selected yes or no, and it will save to the database all of the choices the user said that they're interested in. Does anybody have any questions about the code either here or in the ASPX file? Okay, what does the error say? Okay, what's probably happening, I'll have a look. What you may have forgotten would be one of these properties. So you might just have this. Or you might just have that. Something would be missing somewhere in here. So just I'll leave this up for a couple minutes. Just check it carefully. See if you can find it. If you can't, I can come and have a look. Are there any other questions? Is there anything here that doesn't make sense? I realize you're seeing this for the first time, so it's new. But whenever you use a checkbox, pretty much you can use this similar function to this to evaluate what the user is selecting. 